in this video we're going to learn to do a Gaussian blur. We're going to write our own Gaussian blur filter using the Java buffered image library. This is part of a series. In previous videos we learned to load and display an image file and we learned to convert it to a grayscale image. We learned to pixelate the image and to resize the image. And here we're going to learn to apply a Gaussian blur. Now all of these functions we're building up to apply machine learning functions to an image so that we can recognize features. That's the goal here. But anyways, these are all standalone functions that you might want to use on your own. And if nothing else, you'll learn how to use the Java image library, the buffered images. The concept for this Gaussian blur is really simple. Uh, we're taking a weighted average of nine pixels. Now you might recall if you watched my video on pixelation, we, we looked at either 4 pixels or 9 pixels, and we didn't take a weighted average. We just took a, an average, a mean, of those pixels. And then we made all of the pixels in that block to that average. We set them all to the average. This was pixelation. But with the Gaussian blur, what we want to do is take a weighted average of these 9 pixels, where the center square, the center pixel, gets a heavier weight. So here we're going to weight this center pixel 4, weight these side pixels, which are close to the center, 2 each, and then the corner pixels, as they get farther away from the center, 1 each. This is a block of 9 pixels to calculate the setting for the single um, center pixel, but you could also use a block of 16 pixels. So with this block of 9 pixels, we divide by not 9, which is the number of pixels, but 16, which is the total number of weights, right? 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So we, um, we add up all these weights together, and we get 16 weights, and we divide by 16 when we get the sum of those. So that's how the Gaussian blur works. It's a pretty simple formula for calculating the new value for this center pixel. And you can see how each of the surrounding pixels influences it to kind of blur the image. So the first thing we need to do is make a function call to call the blur uh, function. We've already loaded an image and converted it to grayscale. Now we're going to call the blur function, pass in that image, and we'll get an image back, which will be the blurred image, and then we'll display it. So that is how our function call will work in the main program. Now let's go down here and write the blur function. So we're going to apply a Gaussian blur to a grayscale image. Our function header is going to receive a buffered image called IMG, and it's going to return a buffered image, which we'll call blur image. And the function name is simply blur. So like in previous videos in this series, we first create a new uh, image, and we'll call this one blur image, like I said, it's going to be a new buffered image. It's two pixels smaller, so one on each side, left and right side, and one pixel on top and bottom, we're going to basically trim off. So you're going to lose four, uh, two, two pixels of height and two pixels of width on your image. It's going to return a slightly smaller image. But we're basing this image size on the image that's passed in. So the image is passed in minus two pixels. And we're going to use the grayscale. We're receiving a grayscale image, and we're going to return a grayscale image. So we're going to do some stuff in here to create the blur image. Right now what we have is just an empty canvas, a blank canvas for the buffered image called blur image. But we haven't written any data to it yet. But when we're done writing all the data to it, we'll return the blur image. Now, in the previous videos, you probably already, if you saw any of them, you know that what we did was use nested for loops to iterate through each of the pixels individually of the image. And we're going to do the exact same thing here. So we're iterating through the rows and columns using an X and Y coordinates to access each of the individual pixels of the image. So inside these nested for loops, we're just going to calculate, according to the formula that we explained earlier in the video, uh, the weighted average for that center pixel. So pix is equal to 4 times the center pixel plus 2 times each of the side pixels plus 1 times each of the corner pixels. And then we divide that total by 16. So this is just a straight 
formula that, that I previously explained for calculating that weighted average pixel value on the grayscale. And then we pack that data into P. This is RGB data, right? This is uh, alpha channel and then an RG and B. So we have to use a shift 8, shift 16, shift 24 to pack those 0 to 255 values for RGB and alpha channel back into this P value and then we set it. Set RGB for the X and Y coordinates on our blur image to that P value we just calculated. So that's it. That's, that's the formula for calculating the weighted average and then setting the, the pixel value for that uh, pixel and then calling the set RGB function for the, for the buffered image. And then we return the blurred image after we're done with that. So we can see how that runs in a terminal here. Uh, we'll compile it first and then run the program. And we get side by side. This is the before and after non-blurred and blurred image. And it's not a very heavy blur, but again, you could apply the same blur filter a second time to the image to get a greater blur, or you could rewrite the blur function so that it uses a 16 block of pixels rather than nine, a larger block of pixels. Of course, you'd have to adjust the weighted average calculation to do that, but that would also work. So you could get a greater blur if you want. So that is it for the, um, for the Gaussian blur. It's a pretty simple function. And in the next video, we're going to learn to do edge detection. But before you do edge detection, you should always apply a Gaussian blur to decrease the amount of data and the, the amount of detail in your image. And then we'll apply edge detection in the next video. And as usual, all the code for my videos is posted on my GitHub site at the link below. So make sure you download the code, run it, try it out on your own images and see how it works. I hope this video is helpful for you. If so, please click the thumbs up and like button. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.